Yo, what's going on, guys? I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You don't know the you know the deal. All right. Um, let's get into today. So, on the high time frame, I just want to say something. Okay, a lot of people think. Okay, so right now, what I'm I'm about to say this. Okay, I believe this is the draw on liquidity. Okay, right here, and I think this is the next draw, and you can kind of see how close we are. Okay, and I just want to say here's where. I do not know what's going to happen next. Here's where I react and not predict. So if you look on the 15 minute right now, right, we are inside a 15 minute inversion for value gap, right? And this is a 15 minute inversion for value gap. And on next Monday, if we get a short setup from here, I'll, I'll take it. If I see us blast above this, I will likely long to here. So this is kind of one of those scenarios where, okay, if this happens, I'll log to here. If we get a nice short setup, I'll short it. Okay. And ideally, on the four hour, right? I don't know. I, I know we're gonna hit this. I, I'm very confident we're gonna hit this. I think, but to me, I want this first, okay? And we don't have to get it, it doesn't matter, but I want something like this first. I know this is a draw on liquidity, but to me, this would make the most sense. It, and, and it's not like this would make the most sense. This would just be the best risk reward, okay? Is this a really shitty risk reward up here? Yes, it is. Yes, you can get away with lower time frame setups. Like even this one, you can see we were tracing a discount and then bounce off this higher, uh, this bullish PD rate. But for a lot of you guys who don't understand, yes, this is drawing liquidity. No, it's probably not a good idea to long up here. Okay, I prefer something, prefer us to rebalance down here. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. I'll react to what I see Monday. Okay, this is why you react and not predict. All right, that's the first thing I want to go over. So I'm going to be doing a little mini review of today's price action, okay? And I actually, uh, in Discord, okay? It's very spot on commentary today in Discord. Um, so last night, okay, after the market closed, I said one thing. I said, mark these. These should be taken out before the drop, okay? If we, This is on the four hour, and, and we're right here, Okay. I said before we get any sort of drop, these should be taken out. So if we look at the four hour, right, um, the equal highs are talking about were actually right here, and these were actually equal highs for four one four five about a couple months ago. And I remember marking them out on Twitter, and I remember we had an SMT here, and we ended up dumping. We had an SMT with the Dow, I believe. Um, but these were equal highs, and when I actually pointed this out, um, when I pointed this out, you can see that we were almost to them. We weren't quite to them, and then what ended up happening is we ended up getting a little bit of a dump here. Okay, so the equal highs were up here. You can see what happened is we actually got like a, a decent pullback here. Okay, again the risk reward wasn't great here, but I said th that was my draw on liquidity, and this is kind of one of those things where like on the four hour right when we form these equal highs. Right, you you get see all the stump, but but you're like Ryan, why aren't you why aren't we logging up to these equal highs if there's equal highs buff here? Well, there's no long setup here, okay. Same thing with down here, no long setup. The only really long setup I see is something like this, which could have potentially hit the equal highs. But is this really a long setup? Not really, because it's a it's just a higher time frame retracement too for a value gap, right? So there's no long setup there, okay. No really good long setup in this top. This wick down, we take, we purge liquidity. The first really long setup I see is this right here. Okay, this inverse free value gap. That's the first long setup I see. So, a lot of people wonder, well, how do you know when the equal highs are gonna be hit? Well, even though we had these up there, this was there's never actually any true higher time frame long setup. Yes, there is a bunch of short time, shorter time frame long setups where, if you got in in the in the lower time frame, right. You could have held to the equal highs if you wanted, but you just would have got stopped out every time to break even. Okay, we actually finally get to the buy side of the curve when I see this, okay? This is my first indication. This is my second indication right here. So that's how I know, okay, we're on the buy side of the curve. No, I'm not going to swing runners still here. That's just absurd. I don't know who does it on futures anyways. You can't even do that in a, in a prop fund account anyways. Um, maybe you swung calls on SPY or whatever. Maybe you... uh shorted sqq okay uh, doesn't matter but because now we're on the bias of the curve and because we're getting so close to these now that's when i take these back into account so yesterday i said i know we're on the bias of the curve and we're still about 
12 points away from these, which is pretty good a move in my opinion. We are still 12 points away, and that's when I was like, okay, we should hit these equal highs before the drop down. And the reason why I thought we were going to drop is because we're so overextended, and then there's also a 4 hour free really gap above the equal highs. And this is kind of my, this was my bias today. And I want you to notice something. So there's something called like the 10 a.m. reversal. Why why do we often reverse the 10 a.m.? It's because there's a new four hour candle opening. So the second this candle closes on the four hour, um, it closes at 10 a.m. Okay, you can see what happens. This is the 10 a.m. candle. This is the 10:05 candle. Okay, right after 10 a.m. happens, we just we just totally reverse, right? Um, and this has got short setup I was waiting for. Okay, so off of open, I said I was bullish to these equal highs, which we got. Um, I ended up longing this in pre-market. Um, so this is my long in pre-market. And someone asked me, okay, even though there's these equal lows here, this is not really an entry. I get this is also a volume imbalance, but this is more, I talk about like smart chasing versus dumb chasing. This is kind of dumb chasing because we had a volume imbalance right here and a fair value gap. So we were basically gambling that this fair, this this volume imbalance was going to work and this wasn't. Okay, and there's equal lows. So ideally, this is I have a rule I don't log with equal lows below. But when I logged, there was actually not equal lows and there actually was two equal lows here. But I would say I don't put as much weight on these equal lows before the four market session. Okay, because they're formed during before 9:30, I don't put as much weight on them. There's only two of them. If there are like five here, then yeah, I put weight on them. But there's only like two here, so these are low volume equal lows. Um, anyways, like right here, if you're not long from here, then you wouldn't long here. And these are equal lows formed after you you're in the trade. So ideally, once you're in the trade and you have targets, which my first target with these equal highs, these should not be these should not matter. Yes, they are good to mark. But I'm not gonna get on my trade just just because I see them right here when I think we're in the buy side of the curve. If I thought we were still in the south side of the curve and I saw these equal lows, then yeah, maybe we'd get out. But we had these equal highs above here, and we still have these equal highs this black line up here. So I just stuck to my position. And I kind of held a little bit. Um, and yeah, so once we get in the four hour for a rally gap right over these equal highs, we actually went about seven points over, which is fine. We don't have to. Um, we don't have to reject right when we hit every time. And I said, and I'm live. I said, I said this, ready? So if we look at the one minute, okay, I was looking at NQ and ES at the same time. This is why this is so, so, so important. Okay, if you look at NQ and ES at the same exact time, uh, give me one moment. Okay, it was right here. Okay. At the same time, what do you notice? NQ hit the high, and ES was struggling in this fair value gap. Okay, and when when I was on ES, I knew we were in the four hour fair value gap. When I'm on ES, at this time, I'm like, okay, this is a low risk sell, but it's not a high probability sell, sell yet. And then I took a look at NQ, and I saw NQ same exact setup, and I was like, okay. What I teach in my draw and liquidity video is this. If we get momentum out of a higher time frame PD array, which this is a higher time frame PD array, the target should be the next high. So I said this should be the target. And same thing with NQ, this should be the target. But then when I see NQ in live time hit the target and I see ES still struggling this very value gap, this goes back to the video I posted on Twitter the other day and how you can identify turtle soup entries. This tells me that this should dump because we're in a four hour fair value gap. We're still struggling inside this fair value gap. Well, NQ already hit the high. And I was like, okay, now you could probably technical chase this. And it was on this red candle. I was like, okay, now is probably a good time. This should work, actually. I changed my mind. I said, okay, this should be hit. But then I saw the NQ high be hit. So I was like, okay, now this would actually probably be a better short. And it just worked out beautifully. And I got. Uh, a nice percent off of puts on, on spy, right? Um, I was gonna swing up to the next week. I ended up selling a little early, but that's okay. Um, I don't like the pump back up in the afternoon. And also, these equal lows are really my final target. Um, and NQ, you can see just. Uh, I said NQ a lot more bearish, but I'm expecting these equal highs to be hit, which these were hit this morning. Okay, and if you can see right here, doesn't this look bullish to you? There's a fair value gap here. This looks pretty, or I mean bearish. This looks pretty bearish. But if I know we have equal highs above, I know this is going to be a, a fake Judas swing, right? On the 15 minute. Okay. 
Let me just go back to this. I knew because we had equal highs right here, I knew there was going to be fake Judas swing, okay? And that's very important to note. So see this fair value gap right here? Why did we blast through this? It's because we had equal highs above. So I know this is going to be false market structure ship. Okay, so that's my reason behind that. NQ, okay? You can see if I go back to NQ, this is another example of me analyzing in 3D, okay? Um, NQ, I had, I think it was a five minute fair value gap. Let me check. That was a one minute. I think this was actually before pre market, or before uh, the market opened. Yeah, so it was right here. So it was this for a value gap. So it, we had one in, in ES and we had one in NQ, right? So we have a fair value gap on both. Okay, what do I see? I see right here, if we draw a vertical line, NQ closed above, which I talk about when we close above, we want to see this use of support. We close above on NQ. And on ES, what do I see? I see when we close above an ES, we're actually relatively low and still inside this fair value gap in ES. But because we're still in this fair value gap in ES, and because we close above on NQ, I was like, okay, now we should go hit these equal highs. Also, a third kind of confluence was we hit a bullish SMT. We hit the overnight low on, on NQ multiple times. We never hit the overnight low in ES. So that was another reasoning. Okay, and I said as long as we hold this, we should hit this buy side up here, which you can see we end up hitting it perfectly. And we actually never stop momentum until we hit this buy side. And then we pulled back a little bit, and then we finally rock it up after that. But you can see how we use this as a port as soon as we close above it. And I guess I think it was a two minute fair value gap as well. Um, yeah, so it was also a two minute fair value gap I had marked, right? And I, I literally said, okay, if this does not hold, I know I'm wrong, okay? That's my invalidation if we cut below that. But it held nicely as I expected, okay? And then here's a partial target, and then obviously there's buy side. Um, okay, there's the first target, and obviously the red line is the next target, and then there's the target, right? And I said, should hit before the drop, basically alert live. Okay, so this is where I kind of stopped alerting. I was just talking in live voice saying I'm expecting a short here. And I actually never alerted this in indexometry. This is all in live voice, so I have really nothing to prove except you got to just trust me. Um, this is what I wanted because, again, um, I had sell side here in Martin on Q, which we end up hitting. Okay. Why did I have sell side down there? Just because of momentum, right? I saw the momentum was going down. Okay. I saw momentum just trying to red candle. Where are we likely to hit if we have momentum down? We are likely to hit the next low, which I saw this was the next low. So this was my this is where momentum was telling me, okay, we're going to this low. And this is actually my prediction. Yes, this is what I want to happen. And the only reason why I want this to happen is because it's just gonna be better risk reward. So in the beginning of the video I kind of said I, I I think buy sets above at four thousand three hundred, whatever it was. I just think this would be the best case scenario. I think this would be best risk reward if we get did get down here anywhere under this i'll look for long i'm probably going to go very light if we do get longs up here um uh, but yeah that's kind of my ideal scenario i don't know if it's going to happen the, like i said the 15 minute fair value cup i showed you guys is going to be very important on sunday okay um let me just do this the 15 minute so this is going to be very important okay i i do in the back of my head i I want to say gun to my head. I think we're going to reject it, but I could be wrong. Again, this is just where I don't predict. I'm just going to react to what happens, right? It, it's just it's tough in this situation. Um, and then I also called another draw on NQ at the, at the end of the day. So um, end of the day, you can see what? We took liquidity here. We purged liquidity, right? Um and, and we were in a tire time frame PD array, which I always talk about is counts as, okay, you could still get along without purging liquidity in a higher time frame PD array. So we're in a higher time frame PD array, this giant fair value gap right here. Okay, now if we go back to the one minute, okay, what do we see? We see a 2022 model, lots of momentum over this, last lower high, okay. Fair value gap, everything he's taught us, everything ICT's taught us, fair value gap, we respect that fair value gap. Your stop would have been these equal lows down here. 
which I'm not gonna lie, I would not have lied. I would not have longed this in a lifetime. Okay, and I was done for the day at this point. Um, I was just. I thought the draw was on cue. I thought the draw on this at this was the NQ go highs. I was done for the day, so I didn't take anything here besides I tried to demo long and NQ, which worked out nice. Um, but like right here, I go to NQ real quick. You see the the I had these marked out right. And we never hit it yet. So I wasn't really analyzing yes in this situation, which is why I didn't care about the equal lows. I was analyzing NQ. And you can see whenever we have equal lows, this is something to note. Whenever we have equal lows, but we have an SMT, I don't care about the equal lows. Okay? This is something. I'll probably tweet this after this. Okay? When we have equal lows, but we have an SMT, I do not care about the equal lows. So we have a bullish SMT, we have a market structure set in NQ, and we have equal highs in NQ. So this is why I did not care about the equal lows at all. Um, again, that's going to go over some of your heads, but that's uh, something that takes more screen time. And then on this dump here, I, I can see why people would have shorted the retracement back up, but uh, yeah, this dump here is tricky. This is a little more advanced on why I wouldn't have taken that. I really wouldn't have taken this because there's not really like, I don't know. There's there's still kind of a liquidity pool up here. What I mean by this is this looks like we just rejected here like 5 million times to, to show, okay, there's probably a pool of liquidity over here. So I would have been pretty uh, not confident shorting this for a value gap because it looks like there's a point of liquidity here. Same thing on NQ, okay? NQ, yes, we hit the equal lows, but all this was was a retracement back into discount in the 15-minute fair value gap with the bullish SMT, right? So we just hit discount again on NQ. It was also a fair value gap, and I, I can't shorten the bullish PD raise unless I really, really know the bias. So like earlier, I knew that these were bullish PD rays, but I also knew we rejected a four hour for a value gap and it was a sell model. So that's what I was kind of confident shorting then. But here, we're still kind of relatively low. So because we have these bullish SMT and because we have, I always talk about this as well. When we get consolidation and a quick move down, usually you do not want to trust that. Okay, consolidation, quick move down or up, do not trust the retracement. Um, and again, all this was was a 15 minute for a value gap retracement on, uh, on Net on NQ and knowing yes I was talking about look what fair value gaps are unbalanced and what are rebalanced okay we balance this fair value gap right here okay there's no other bulls for value gaps to rebalance on here and it was also a, a SIBI from before and there's still an unbalanced one up there so the odds were likely to be better long here um, the risk award is better long there and again I get why some people probably shorted this but all this was was a, a retracement okay a 15 minute this is just a 15 minute market structure is for the fair value gap below so um, and it just looked like this was a pool of liquidity because we rejected like 50 times and usually if we usually if we do go down further we just reject once and then just make a nice swing high and go down we don't make all this double triple top ish setup here kind of so um, yeah, that was kind of my analysis of today. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is a little bit of a longer video, but a lot went on today. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and peace.